All right, YouTube, I decided to bring you something other than a Glock or an AR. I know, surprising. So today, I went out and treated myself. I was in the market for another pistol. I um, wasn't really sure of what I was going to get, but I knew my budget was between five and $600. And this came up for $600, so I decided to buy it because I really, uh, ever since they announced it, Smith & Wesson announced this pistol, I really like the look of it. I've owned MMPs in the past. They're fantastic pistols. I owned a uh, first generation or MMP 1.0 with uh, the beaver tail. I've owned a Shield 45, a Shield 9mm, not the Shield Plus, and then a uh, MMP 2.0 with the hinge trigger. I never owned it with their core optic system, and I I've never owned a uh, this particular model which is the metal framed Smith & Wesson MMP 2.0. And I must say, this is just a good, good looking pistol. Not that that should really matter, but that definitely uh, is a factor in my, uh, purchasing my purchasing decision for new firearms, right? Um, I have to like the looks of it, or at least really want whatever that gun's going to offer, but um just man straight out of the box smith and west knocked it out of the park uh the, it's a full metal frame so this is a 70 75 t6 aluminum lower it is seracoded and then the uh the slide is your standard probably like 416 steel like they, they make most slides out of now the texturing on the slide has has gotten better over the years they used to just do this fish scale right through here but they decided to take that um, design and move it all the way up the slide, which it makes racking the slide this way. It really grabs, lets your hand grab onto that slide very easily. It's very easy to rack this way. Um, man, it's a, it's a good, it's a good functioning, good looking pistol. Comes stock with a three dot, just white sights. These are not night sights. And I, I find it interesting that the standard MMP 2.0 core uh, comes with suppressor height sights and these don't so it's kind of interesting that they're you know the premium version of the pistol doesn't come with the suppressor height sights i think it should now smith and wesson has greatly improved the the trigger on this i have been uh, dry firing this uh, my main complaint would probably be that all that take up there but you hit a defined wall a little bit of creep and a nice clean break Resets pretty weak and it's not very audible and I can't really feel it as well as a Glock and but the the break is is really nice you don't have that like Glock creep that you get even though I've changed the triggers and uh and these Glocks here there you see that Glock creep that resets really short but this is a heavily modified trigger on this I guess there's uh, quite a bit of take up on there too, but but you have to spend you have to spend some money to get your uh, your Glock trigger to feel like this, and this comes out of the box just like it. It is a plastic trigger trigger shoe, I should say, and uh, I always wanted to try like an Apex Smith and Wesson trigger. I heard those are fantastic triggers, but I don't think I want to spend $180 to change out this trigger. And you have to buy the uh, uh, MMP metal version for the Apex trigger, which is $180. It comes with some other parts and stuff too. Let's go ahead and break this down because uh, Smith & Wesson is one of those pistols that are relatively easy to work on. I remember working on this pistol before. Uh, this is your recoil spring. It is captured. It is metal, which is kind of nice. It's just a, a single spring on there. Your barrel is four and a quarter inches. Uh, 416R with a one in 10 twist. It does have a loaded chamber indicator on the slide in the barrel, which I'm not a huge fan of because it tends to blow up uh, carbon onto your you know, front lens of your optic. It does look like it's Armonite coated underneath the Cerakote, which is kind of nice. This is Cerakoted. It's like they're bull shark gray or, anything, or something like that. This is underneath your optic plate. You'll have like um, 
I don't know, like a little teardrop design where your, uh, pl your, where your plunger is right here. This is your plunger. And then in order to get your fire, ping, fire pin to uh, be exposed on the breach face, you have to hit down that safety plunger and stuff. So there's your firing pin. Very easy to put back together. The frame is pretty simple too. I always liked Smith & Wesson frames uh, because you can only drive out your pins from one direction and put them in from one direction. This is your trigger bar pin right here. I usually knock out that one first. And then this is your locking block pin on this particular model that does have a uh, polymer locking block holder and then you have your metal locking block here the same with back here where you like your sear is i think that's your sear and stuff and that's what your firing pin rise up on you can change out these two parts to make your trigger a little bit a little bit nicer there's your trigger return spring there pretty simple design pretty easy to, to change out parts again not as easy as Glock, in my opinion, but maybe that's just because I am super familiar with how uh, Glock weapon systems work. Uh, in order to drive out your, uh, uh, your, your firing pin and stuff, you do have uh, a channel liner right there. You just push down just like, a, just like a Glock, and you can take off your back plate and stuff. So it's um, a pretty simple design. Uh, magazine uh, catch and stuff is pretty much the, the same as a Glock. The magazine uh, release, it's nice and textured. It has that sandpaper texture on it. It has uh, ambidextrous uh, slide stop slide release, but it is not... I don't think it's the same. I don't think it's the same orientation. So it's a little bit different for the lefties as it would be for the righties. Or at least that's what it looked like when I took off the frame. Let's look at that again real quick because I'm kind of curious. I don't think it's it's the same on both sides. I could be wrong. It looks the same. So, so nope, it is not. It's a little bit... You can see that ambidextrous slide stop slide release right there. It is a little bit different on your, on your right side as it is on your left. So, with the slide on, it look, kind of looked like it, it was, so... And that's how you put it back on. It's got a full length uh, dust cover, full length uh, Picatinny accessory rails for your lights and lasers and chainsaws, whatever you want to put on it. Uh, it's got exchangeable back straps. This is the uh, small back strap. It has a medium, medium large, and a large. I find the small works quite well. I'm not entirely sure if you can take this panel off, but it would be nice if you could take this panel and exchange it every now and then because it's sandpaper grip does seem to get a lot of a lot of crap trapped into it it's hard to clean out but the grip texture is quite nice it's pretty aggressive uh, i've always liked the grip texture on smith and wessons some people think it's a little too aggressive i think it's fine you might want to wear an undershirt if uh, you're going to carry this i do plan on carrying this i've ordered a, i've already ordered a bunch of parts i've ordered three more magazines for this it came with two Glocks come with three. I kind of wish that all pistol manufacturers would come with three magazines out of the box. These are 17 round magazines. They are steel. It feels it feels very nice for the magazines to drop freely out of this. It, it feels different than the polymer frame. I feel like they drop out a little bit smoother. They guide in a little bit smoother. Uh, they're doesn't really seem to be much of a funnel on that magwell but it is a little bit of a funnel i did order an ed brown magwell with some base plates i did order a tactical kinetics dog tag optic plate for the uh, rmr uh, for this core system i did order night vision suppressor height night sights with a um it's a blacked out rear, but they have two tritium vials in the back and then a orange tritium front. Three magazines. Magazines were, were like $31 a piece, so let's call it 100 bucks for three magazines. So they're a little bit more expensive than Glocks. The Apex trigger, man, I looked at it, but it's $180. And for as good as this trigger is out of the box, I decided just to keep this trigger because I've been dry firing it and I am perfectly content with the look and the feel of this trigger. 
Um, I do wish it were like metal, but it is what it is. I don't think I'm going to change out the magazine release or the ambidextrous slide stop. I might change out the back plate just because that's what I do. I don't think I'm going to put a light on it, but if I did want to put a light on it, it would probably be a X300 Turbo. I did order an RMR Type 2 adjustable for this, so I'm just going to put a, an RMR. And I did order a, uh, a cheapo holster and decided just to see how just comfortable this is this is to carry or if I want to carry this inside the waistband uh, before I invest into a much more expensive holster, right? I decided just to see if... Because um, a lot of times when you don't add like your flashlight, it's, it's much easier to carry. Uh, and this isn't really that much bigger than a um, Glock 19. So getting two extra rounds for basically just about a pinky finger more of length on the grip right but man this is a good looking pistol man i must say and uh they have a spec ops version which is in the od green i do think the od green version is a better looking pistol but i don't like the comp i don't like the look of the comp and then they just came out with the smith and wesson uh carry comp with a polymer frame or a metal frame, but the metal frame's like freaking eleven $1 hundred dollars. Uh, so it's five hundred dollars more than this particular model. And that Spec Ops one, they actually had a used Spec Ops at the local gun store, and they wanted eight hundred dollars for it. I almost ponied up the money for it, but I didn't want the comp. I just wanted the the OD green frame and the slide, but I was not willing to pay the extra two hundred dollars for those features. Right? Um, I do quite like the uh, the gray Cerakote. And Smith & Wesson looks like they did a fantastic job on the Cerakote. It does look they, like they did a fantastic job on the machining on the actual frame itself. Uh, man, when I saw this, I just I couldn't turn it down for $600. $600 out the door. That included tax, $44.73. That included everything. So pretty happy with, uh, with the purchase. Well worth it, in my opinion. And uh, if... For just for example, like your Glock 19 MOS, they had it in store. They didn't have any used. That was $700 before taxes and stuff. So I'm even though I like Glocks and I basically buy new Glocks for the parts and stuff, um, this is a better value uh, for sure. This is much better value than, than a Glock out of the box. Very, very smooth. Now I did... I did uh, treat this right and I, uh, I oiled everything and but man just I won't say it's like on ball bearings but it is much it's just so it is buttery smooth it is it's a nice smooth feeling I, I have a feeling that's because of metal on metal and I don't know it just it feels like it's well fitted to the the frame and slide together overall I'm very excited I'll probably I'll shoot this I'm basically going to keep this OEM stock I'm just going to put RMR on this, a magwell, and that's it. And I uh, carry it with the holster. And man, let's take a look at this trigger again. Let's go ahead and uh, see how heavy this trigger is since I got my trigger pull gauge right here. I'm guessing it's about four and a half pounds. Four and a half pounds. Let's do it twice, just to see. Four and a half pounds. Seems to be consistent, at least. Let's do it one more time. A little more, like four and three quarters pounds. So it's pretty. It's a pretty consistent trigger. It doesn't feel that heavy. It's got a lot of take up. I kind of wish it didn't have that much take up, but that's okay. It's got a little over travel stop right there. Nice, short, crisp, clean break. There's your reset right there. It does push your finger out a little bit when you get to the reset. You're back on the wall, basically. and then the, It's got a really short reset, which I like. I just wish the uh, reset was a little more audible in both feel and sound, especially compared to a Glock. But man, that, that's a very good trigger out of the box. I mean, it's no PDP or Canic, but 
It's pretty close. Pretty close. But yeah, good looking pistol, guys. Do any of you own MMPs? What do you think about MMPs? Have you guys been looking at the metal framed MMPs? Some people like the polymer frame because it adds a little bit of flex during recoil. I have not shot this yet, so I don't know how this is going to feel. Uh, but I think it's going to feel like an MMP. I don't really see that much difference between a polymer f this this one and the polymer frame. I believe this weighs 30 ounces, and the polymer framed in the same you know full size version is 29 ounces. So this is only an ounce heavier. Not that much more heavy, but I do like the. F I can feel that it's metal. It feels. It feel you can feel the coolness of the metal in your hands. It's it's just a good good feeling quality feeling firearm. Uh, so I'm excited that that I picked it up, and if I didn't run so many Glocks, I'd probably run an MMP. I'd probably invest into into the MMP uh, lineup that or the PDP. I really like the PDPs too. Man, those are fantastic feeling pistols, uh, but. So far, I uh, I am impressed with what Smith and Wesson has been doing lately with like their carry comp with their MMP metal frame. Uh, I really hope that Glock does something like this down the road where they make an all metal Glock or something. That 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 would be um, that would probably be pretty cool in my eyes. I think now that Gaston's is dead, uh, that they can make some uh, some newer changes to to the lineup and stuff that he might not have been willing to. But some people may be opposed to that, some people might not. But I do like the direction Smith & Wesson goes, and, and they do make a, a good improvements on their pistol lineup, in my opinion. So uh, the, the MMP lineup's kind of um, underrated, in my, in my opinion. Yeah, a lot of people own them, but I don't see a lot of people talking about MMPs. Or even the, like the Shield Pluses. The Shield Pluses are fantastic carry arms, or carry firearms, and um, they're, they're really inexpensive. So I don't really see that many people carrying the Shield Plus. It's all, you know, 43X or P365, you know, or X Macro or something like that. So uh, I don't think people give enough love to uh, Smith & Wesson MMPs. Uh, so I decided, I decided to treat myself. So MMP 2.0 Metal, let me know what you guys think.